Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and I'll bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we got some pretty good stuff. First up, Bitcoin is at a tipping point and could become preferred currency for international trade, so says the group over at Citibank. This is interesting because in the past, they've been very wishy-washy on what is going on with Bitcoin, and they really lay out that there is a four-tier cycle to what Bitcoin could potentially do. So we'll take a look at that. Also, Mark Cuban is now on the Bitcoin side and argues that Bitcoin is dead, telling off some person, uh, time to move on. Also, we're gonna take a look at uh, Kentucky is pushing mining tax breaks in a bid to attract crypto community. I think this is very big because it's a, it's a very forward thinking prospect that Kentucky is doing to bring forth uh, cryptocurrency miners into their state. And also the most interesting one, Gary Ginsler, uh, reveals his policy on Bitcoin and crypto regulation. Now, this is uh, President Joe Biden's SEC uh, chair pick, and it's going to be very interesting to see what this gentleman says because these are the things uh, moving forward that are the most important. So we're getting all those uh, four topics, but first take a look at what's going on into the market. And before we start, just so you know, obviously there is no pool background. There's no cool background. We're at our uh, Houston in the uh, new investment property, just kind of getting things settled and getting things done so we can uh, rent it out. So over the next couple of days, you might see uh, this background. You might see another background. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, but uh, this is uh, this is how businesses work sometimes. You just have to get going and, and just keep doing. So let's see. Today it is, I don't know what day it is. It's Friday. Hey, it's Friday, March 5th. It's uh, 4.30 p.m. Houston, Texas time. And here's what we got. Let me blow this up so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. Bitcoin is still tumbled down and it's below 50,000. And uh, again, you know, people have been talking about, uh, you know, there's things that are going on as far as like uh, the F2 pool dump and uh, there's market manipulation. There's different news stories and tweets and everything else. But again, I always say to you, what has changed? Nothing has changed. It is the same old thing. So uh, for me, I'm just like, you know what? Keep driving that price down. Keep driving that price down because I will pick it up as it uh, scales down. Very happy with uh, with doing that. So um, yeah, it's, unless something changes, unless uh, some new information changes where you know it, it comes out that uh, Vladimir Putin uh, created Bitcoin to destroy the world, uh, I think I'm gonna still keep buying. Anyhow, uh, Ethereum is uh, still, in my opinion, un underperforming, 1542. And it's only up just a slight bit. Cardano uh, up 6% in 24 hours, which it should be. There's been fantastic uh, news, fantastic work being done over there, the Cardano Foundation. Um, there's a great thing with uh, decentralized finance coming on, the Gogan era, the Merry Hard Fork, uh, going in for uh, uh, native assets. So this is just uh, one of those to watch. And it's it's solidly in that number three position. Tether's Tether, nobody really cares. Binance Coin, Polka Dots, anything up, man. Fantastically, no, just pretty much sideways, except for Rap Terran Luna. Wow, I think that's uh, Mike Novogratz's uh, thing. Good for him. Yeah, that's about it. Let's do this. Let's just take a look at the projected range and uh, see where we're going. Now, if you don't know, Trade the Chain, it's is uh, it's a sentiment analysis. What it does is it crawls the internet, all the blog posts. It also is uh, one of four different crypto companies that has a direct API into Twitter because, in my opinion, a lot of people's opinions, uh, news is what drives this market. So when we take a look at these three numbers, you're looking at, uh, this is with 90% assurance, uh, that middle number, that 3%. That gain is what they're saying is going to happen in the next hour. And then they're, they're be, statistically, they're 90% accurate on all these numbers. So uh, Maker would be one to look at in the next hour. Uh, Harmony, it's going to go up 2%. And again, it's not financial advice, entertainment purposes only, but uh, this is what it tells us. So with 90% assurance, I mean, this is what I use if I'm going to make trades. Now, I don't make a lot of trades. Uh, I, you know, I, I have the guys over there help me and uh, uh, from uh, Trade the Chain and Market Rebellion. But uh, these are the things I would definitely look at. So interesting stuff. Anyhow, you can take a look at Trade the Chain, um, the platform. There's a link in the description. But let's move on to our first piece, shall we? So, first of all, normally I would start with the Citigroup story because that's a big story, right? Citigroup talks about uh, you know how Bitcoin can be become a preferred uh, currency and there's going to be uh, these three different uh, provisions and the fourth one coming about. But that's not the story. This is the story right here. This is the story. Biden's SEC, Biden's SEC chair pick, Gary Gensler, reveals the policies on Bitcoin and crypto regulation because without policy, without the government pushing forward, without them allowing innovation to flourish, it'll still happen. It'll just take a long time, right? So when the internet came out, 
that's pretty much what they said. They go, you know what? Uh, when the internet came out, I was just a kid and I was like, uh, like they're honestly, you know, people were always telling me they're, they're not gonna let it happen, but they did. And, uh, for some reason, uh, you know, they, they actually made the right choice. And they allowed it to flourish. Now they could have stepped in and tried to regulate. I mean, really over-regulate and it could have happened. It still would have taken off. It still would have taken off. It just would have taken a lot longer. And when I see stories like this and I hear about, uh, like Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, uh, he was uh, doing an interview, and he and they asked him, "Why did you transfer over and now want to be a part of Bitcoin?" He goes, "I change when the facts change," and he goes, "When when all these ex when when these exchanges and all these different uh, roads are coming in, and we're talking about the ETFs in in Canada and Switzerland, and there's a lot of uh, different options for you know traditional players like myself to get in this market." He goes. That to me is a solid plan, and I'm going to be a part of that. So when you hear stuff like this from the governments, this is another big thing that uh, people like O'Leary uh, really con are concerned about. Do I care if O'Leary gets in? Not really. But what is important to me is that O'Leary talks about it and tells all the people that have no idea what cryptocurrency digital assets are so that they can get interested and they can learn about it. That's the big thing. So for here, this is what I want to hear so that they can alleviate those fears from those traditional players who are stuck in the ETF mindset and they can get in. Those other people who have money can hear about it and they can get in and so on down the line. Again, um, these are the people that are going to buy things up on Robinhood. You know, they're going to buy Ethereum on Robinhood. I don't care. They're going to buy it on PayPal. Again, I don't care. I know it's paper. It's just paper, but, uh, you know, I want those people here so they can at least learn about it. And hopefully they can go to danteachescrypto.com, 100% free website so they can learn all about cryptocurrency. That's why I made it free so people can learn about it. Anyhow, here's what we got with Gary Gensler. So if you don't know, Gensler is a professor at the MIT Sloan School of Management, co-director of FinTech Sale, senior advisor to the MIT Media Lab Digital Currency Initiative. This guy is no lightweight. He knows exactly what he's talking about. There is a hour and a half um, presentation that he gave over at MIT, where he talks about blockchain. He specifically talks about Ripple and XRP, and he talks about cryptocurrency digital assets. The guy knows exactly what he's talking about. So when he is in this position, this is perfect for us, and you're going to see why. So he teaches blockchain, whatever else. He's also a former Goldman Sachs partner who serves service chairman of the CFTC. So he has his feet in both waters, traditional market, cryptocurrency market. He knows exactly what it is and how they can be combined. That is the kind of guy I want uh, in charge of cryptocurrency regulation. So this was on a hearing. This was a couple of days ago. And they just asked him, you know, what do you think is going to happen and how are we going to move forward with these crypt with these digital assets? And he says, look, Bitcoin and other crypto cryptos have brought new thinking to payments and eventual inclusion, but they've also raised new issues of investor protection that we still need to attend to. Great. That's fine. So he says, I think if confirmed to the SEC, I'd work with fellow commissioners to promote new innovation, but also at the core, ensure investor protection. Fantastic. Because look, we do need that. Let's be honest. People have been ripped off left and right. Uh, there are some problems that are rife in this in in uh, in our uh, sector. We can't deny that. So if we get a little regulation, I'm okay with that. And I know people always say, Rob, you're a moron. That's true. I am. Uh, but then they'll say, you don't know what you're talking about because we should have absolutely zero regulation. We should just go forward. We should just, you know, trustless society. And sort of, sure, that's great. You know what? I'm okay with that if you want to go that route. But however, I think a real little regulation goes a long way. And if we got somebody who's going to be heavy handed, that's a problem, right? I have no problems with speed limits. I just don't. Uh, if you want me to go 80 miles per hour on the highway, sure, I'll, I'll abide by that. But if you want me to go five miles per hour from here to LA, I'm going to have problems. And that's what we talk about with a little regulation goes a wrong, long way, just hopefully not, not over-regulate. And some people will always say, well the, well, the government tries to over all the time. I'm not saying that they won't. I'm just saying that this is what we have and uh, this is the reality. So let's just step forward. So to elaborate, he would to clarify, he states, to the extent that somebody is offering an investment contract or securities on the SEC's remit and then have exchanges that operate there, then we have to make sure there's investor protection. Great. That's fine. On the other hand, if it's not that and it's a commodity, as Bitcoin has been deemed to be, and he said this in the hearing, uh, then it's either a question for Congress or it's possibly a question for the CFTC. So again, if you're talking about securities, 
now you're talking about you know the SEC, which is what uh, he would be uh, the head of. We were talking about commodities going to be the head of the CFTC. And uh, we know that we don't want to go down that route as far as securities. That is why the SEC has that uh, lawsuit against Ripple. But again, what is, what is impressive to me about this whole story is that he's not saying that, hey, we need to really squash this. We need to get rid of it. And we need to put the, the power back into the hands of the almighty bankers and uh, the Federal Reserve. That's not what he's saying. He's like, look, there's a lot of opportunities here. We should really explore them and uh, get down to business and hopefully uh, incorporate this into the financial sector because he's been a part of the traditional world. It's also part of the cryptocurrency world. I think this is big news for those institutions that are worried about, you know, what's going to happen with this new um, you know, policies coming about this, you know, the, the new presidency. Here's your answer. And this is the type of thing that will push a catalyst for the big money institutions to come back in, in my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. All right, the next three pieces, I'm just gonna go over pretty quickly because I think that really was the big uh, story. So this one's interesting. Kentucky pushes for, <laughs> they're, they're giving tax breaks, tax breaks to tax miners. I live in America. I would not consider Kentucky a very progressive uh, type of uh, state, but here we are. Uh, Kentucky House Budget Committee approved a bill in a 1902 vote to eliminate the sales tax on electricity for use in crypto mining operations. That's pretty cool. And that's the big thing. The bill sponsor, uh, Republican Repres Representative Stephen R Ruddy, Rudy, Ruddy, Rudy, recognized the state's cost but believes that the projected price will eventually benefit the state by attracting a highly sophisticated, highly technical industry. Smart. That's smart because if you want to get the type of tech industries that would attract businesses into your state, this is the type of thing that you really have to do. That's why all the different states are really fighting for an Amazon warehouse. I'm not saying that they're all fighting for it. I'm just saying that a lot of them are because that brings money, that brings tax revenue, and that's just good for business. And especially, uh, you know, if you have something like this, this is a little bit more of a specialized field. So that would just bring more jobs into the community. So, you know, why wouldn't they do that? That only totally makes sense to me. Anyhow, and then lastly, uh, Kentucky economic officials uh, have already approved Blockware Solutions incentives as the company plans to invest $28 million in a local mining operation, broadening the state's appeal for the mining industry at large. So again, this is not something I would, I would think that Kentucky would do, but uh, here I am uh, eating crow. I have no idea what I'm talking about sometimes as far as like what's going, what goes on in each state, but this is good to see that each state is actually taking a, a little bit more of a forward step into bringing blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency into the fold. Anyhow, let me know if you think that's good news or bad news. I personally think it's good, but let me know in the comments section. All right, and then second to last, this is very quick. I just think it's kind of funny. Um, Mark Cuban got, into, got an argument with some guy who's a gold bug. I, I don't like saying that guy's name because I think he's the biggest shill and he's cost, like I said in my Twitter post, that guy's cost more money to more people than a Ponzi scheme, just about. He is always talking about how great gold is. He's pushed people away from Bitcoin. He's scared them into only buying gold. And really, if you look at gold, what has it done in 10 years? It's doubled. That's pretty great, right? What has Bitcoin done in 10 years? So if he just would have said after a couple of years and he got it through his thick head, look, you know, put up 1%, 2%, 3% in there. I think he would have saved a lot of people a lot of money, but uh, that's it. So Mark Cuban here called him out on it. And he goes, look, this is what he says. He goes, gold is, is hyped as much as crypto. Do we really need gold jewelry? Gold can make you a ring. Bitcoin and Ethereum are technologies that can make you a banker, allow friction-free exchange of value, and are extensible into an unlimited range of business and personal applications. So I will just say this. Um, you can't poo-poo all over gold too. I own gold, I own silver, and I own Bitcoin. I just do not understand why people wouldn't own all three of those. Those, to me, are the uh, savings account of the 2020, 2021, and moving forward. I just don't understand. So, you know, when Mark talks about how, you know, gold is, he, in this article, he talks about how gold is dead. Gold isn't dead. Gold's going to be around. Gold's been around for thousands of years. It's going to still be around for thousands of years. People will always value gold, and that's just how it is. But... If you look at it, uh, does it have the most, the highest potential gains? No. Uh, what else can it do besides be a store of value? Well, you can make gold with it, or you can make gold. You make jewelry with it. 
uh, you can, transistors and things like that. And, and, you know, silver is also one of those things that we need for uh, uh, mainframes and motherboards and stuff. But I mean, in all reality, um, if we're looking for a real store of value that we can move to anywhere, anywhere in the world in under 30 minutes, really, it costs next to nothing to do. Uh, it used to cost a nickel and now it costs over $50,000. Well, 49,000 something. Um, that's pretty much why I got into it. And if you're looking for a store of value, I think it is one of those really great ones. And before people say, well, gold's a great store of value, but you have to remember gold isn't stable as well. Gold has doubled. Gold has gone down. Bitcoin has just gone up a heck of a lot more and it's gone down a heck of a lot more. So it's just more volatile. So it, to me, I think it's still a good store of value. Anyhow, let me just think of the comment section. And let's move on to our last piece, which I think is, it, it was pretty interesting about what Citigroup talks about here. Uh, I just don't, I just, I, I just can't wrap my head around it. Uh, but they says, uh, Bitcoin is at a tipping point, could become a preferred currency for international trade. Okay, what do we got? Well, they just put out a report, 108 page report. Uh, I did not read the whole thing. I just looked at the highlights and that's why I give to you. Um, but it talks about how it's at a tipping point. And it says, the firm attributes the changes to enhancements to exchanges, trading data and custody services um, that are increasing and being revamped to accommodate the requirements of institutional investors. So that's great. It's what we just talked about uh, just a little bit ago. So yeah, if they can do these things and just make it more comfortable from for these guys, so much the better. Have them all come in, join the party. Uh, the advantage of Bitcoin and global payments, including its decentralized design, lack of foreign exchange exposure, and potentially cheaper money movements, secure payments channels, and traceability. Uh, that's what the great thing about Bitcoin is. And so when people say about, ah, but you know, it's totally private and no one can track you. The, the, so that's the whole point of the public ledger. I mean, people can actually track you and see what it is. Now, not that uh, they will know exactly which wallet or, or what, which one it is, but uh, they can see where the money flows to. And that is one of those things where uh, that is the great thing uh, about uh, having an open uh, decentralized uh, network. Anyhow, to finish up, uh, they talked about uh, these attributes combined with Bitcoin's global reach and neutrality could spur it to become the currency of choice for international trade. I know some people will say that'll never happen because this country won't, won't trust this country and this country will is at war with the other one. But remember, Bitcoin's owned by nobody and there's no CEO, there's no magical mythical person behind the uh, curtain that's controlling the whole show. So in, in this regard, uh, the whole neutrality about, you know, no one really owns it, nobody really has it, uh, no one really, uh, you know, is the central figure, that could be a, a big factor to making it uh, this worldwide um, currency. Now, right now, they have to do something with uh, layer two solution or something to make it, uh, first of all, affordable. And second of all, a, a more accessible to everyone. Because if you try to, if the whole planet right now tried to use Bitcoin, it would be like 2017 when there wasn't even that much. And it was taking like, you know, four, eight, 12 hours for a transaction. And you were, and, it, and the transaction was like superly high cost. And that was just Bitcoin. Now look what's going on with Ethereum. So there's no way I think this could actually go off without a hitch as it currently stands. There's no way it could happen. Um, and that just doesn't, that's just what makes sense to me. Anyhow, this was the crux of it. And I think the most important part. The report also explains that Bitcoin has seen three stages of focus so far. Technological oddity, one. Censorship resistant money. And that's kind of like, in the beginning, 2009, 10, it was just kind of like, that's eh, it's just, you know, nerd money. It's funny whatever just odd and then it became a censor a censorship resistant money and that kind of happened from like 2011 12 all the way to 2017 people were like it's money it's money money this whole store of value narrative only came about in like 2018 19 20 when people were like we can't use this currency right now let's we'll just go over the store of value and it and, and it worked out pretty well and uh of course the store of value they, they call it digital gold but it predicts that we will soon see a fourth stage of focus as Bitcoin transitions to becoming an international trade currency. That's just not me talking. That's a multi-billion uh, bank here, Citigroup going, and this is a, their, their think tank going, this is what it's gonna be. This is where we see Bitcoin going. So I personally don't see it going like that, the way that it's it's uh, you know currently technologically advanced i think it has to do a lot more things but uh, that's for way smarter people than me to figure out and uh let me tell you that's not hard to to beat me in that regard anyhow so uh that's it for today's video so look if you made it all the way in and you liked it 
why don't you give it a thumbs up? That'd be fantastic. Also, if you like the types of videos, why don't you subscribe? Because we, we do daily ones and they're time sensitive like we just talked about. And uh, I'll put two more up on your left and right so you can check some more things out. And uh, that is it for today. So first of all, uh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the next one.